In this video, I just wanted to provide some clarification on two of the Gauss Markov assumptions as I've stated them. The two Gauss Markov assumptions which we're going to talk about here are that of having a random sample, and the second one is having no serial correlation amongst the error term. Well, it turns out that if we have a random sample, this necessarily implies that there must be no serial correlation in errors, or there's no autocorrelation amongst errors is another way of stating it. So why have I stated both of these Gauss-Markov assumptions when, in fact, they're sort of one and the same? Well, the reason is that in time series, we cannot assume that we have a random sample. But the Gauss-Markov assumption of having no serial correlation amongst errors still stands. We still have to have no serial correlation amongst errors, even though we no longer have a random sample. So the idea here is that I wanted to introduce both of these concepts such that I could develop tests for serial correlation and errors, um, and it wouldn't sound too foreign when we came to speak about it in context in time series situations. Okay, so that's the sort of clarification. I'm now going to provide a mathematical proof of why no okay so that's now the clarification i'm now going to provide a mathematical proof as to why having a random sample necessarily implies that we have no serial correlation errors and to do so we're going to first of all talk about our population and within the population there is some sort of population process so there is some sort of yi is equal to alpha plus beta xi plus some sort of error term ui. A random sample from that population is defined as a set of n individuals and for each of those individuals we have a value of xi, the sort of independent variable, and yi, the dependent variable. And the idea is that each of these individual draws from the population are independent of one another and they are identically distributed. So the identically distributed part, the ID, means that each of the individuals comes from this population process. The first I means that the observations are independent on one another. What does independence actually mean mathematically? Well, independence means that the expectation of YI with YJ is equal to the expectation of YI times the expectation of yj. So that's what it means for yi and yj to be independent. And importantly, this is obviously for the circumstance where i does not equal j, because if i did equal j, they very much would be dependent on one another. Okay, so what does this imply for the covariance between error terms? In order to work this out, first of all, we need to work out what is the covariance between yi and yj. Well, if you actually work through the definition of the covariance, it just means that this is given by the expectation of yi times yj minus the expectation of yi times the expectation of yj. And since we know from the above expression that the expectation of yi times yj is equal to the product of the two expectations, it's easy to see that this covariance term is going to be zero because if I was to take over to the other side this sort of product term here, I'd just be left with zero on the other side. So yi and yj being independent implies that their covariance must be zero. Okay, so how do we use this to help us find out what the covariance between a given two of the errors is? Well, the idea is that we can replace each of these yi or yj by the population process. So this first yi here becomes alpha plus beta times xi plus ui, where I've just substituted in from this population process up here. And then for yj, I just substitute in alpha plus beta xj plus uj. And then we can just expand this covariance as we would sort of a, a normal bracket, even though it's not exactly the same thing. You can think about it in those terms. We know that by assumption, the xi and the ui in our population are uncorrelated. 
Um, we knew that because of the fact we stated this population process and part of the population process would be the fact that the expectation of ui given xi is equal to zero so that's the same thing as saying they're uncorrelated and if we do this we can then expand the covariance term as equal to beta squared times the covariance of xi with xj plus the covariance of ui with uj and we know that this whole expression has to be equal to zero because of the fact that we know that the covariance of yi with yj is zero and further because of the fact we know that the x's are independent we know that we can get rid of this first term here and finally we can sort of see here that we're left with the fact that the covariance of ui with uj must be equal to zero in other words, we've got to have no serial correlation in errors. And we've got that just by assuming the fact that we had a random sample.